Well, thanks so much for tuning into this earnings conversation with Persistent Systems. Uh, it's unwise as, uh, as a news anchor to praise a company's performance too much at the start of the interview. But sometimes you got to make an exception simply because with 11% or 11.1% sequential growth, highest ever TCV bookings of nearly $400 million and adding uh, nearly 3,000 employees as well and still doing well on the operational metrics, persistent systems has delivered yet another really strong quarter. Sandeep Kalra joins in to talk about that. Um, Sandeep, uh, great show, a number of highlights. Uh, let's start off with what stood out for you. Sure, Neeraj. So first of all, thank you for the kind words. Let me start with summarizing the results and then we can you know, kind of oh. look at what went in. So as you rightly summarized, the Q1 came in at $241.5 million. This gives us a growth of 11.1% quarter on quarter, 44.8% year on year. This is in dollar terms. For the viewers who are converting in rupee terms, this translates into a growth of 14.7% quarter on quarter, 52.7% year on year respectively. Now this Please keep in mind, uh, you know, we've done four sequential quarters of 9% growth before this. So this is the fifth sequential quarter of 9% growth. And if I may say so, this is the ninth sequential quarter of growth for us as a company. And so, and this, if you look at it, what stood behind all this is basically the order bookings that we have been doing over the quarters. If you look at the order bookings for this quarter, the total contract value came in at $394 million out of which the new total contract value stands at $230.3 million. On an annual contract value basis, the 12 month, the next 12 month realizable value of this is 200 and, you know, uh, 263 million. And the new bookings out of this is 139.8 million. For people who are number buffs, this should give them enough, uh, you know, numbers to crunch on the confidence of the revenues and so on. Now, what this means is the ACV on trailing 12-month basis is $1.017 billion. TCV is $1.37 billion. This is from a trailing 12-month perspective. On the people front, Neil, you rightly pointed out, we added 3,000 plus people. To be precise, we added 3,039 new colleagues globally. This brings our total employee strength to 21,638. Out of this, 1,950 are fresh graduates. And you would remember, we have been talking about expanding capacity as an industry. People are looking at bringing freshers because, you know, unless we expand the talent and everyone keeps growing, it's very hard to keep the growth going. So from our contribution, we are hiring roughly about 3,300 freshers in the Q1, Q2 timeframe. 1,950 have already joined us. Q2, we will see another 1,350 come in. So from that perspective, we are putting the right blocks in place to continue our growth. And this will also be a margin expansion you know, kind of activity for us as these freshers come into the mainstream for us after their training periods and so on. Now, utilization for the quarter came in at 79.5%. It's a slight decline, roughly about a 1.1% decline over Q4. And this is also somewhere an impact of the number of people that we bring in uh -huh. to fuel the future growth. And so to keep in mind, this will also help us keep growing and be a margin lever for us as we move to the next quarter. Now, the attrition... For the quarter, and that's another thing I'm sure you're keeping a keen eye on. So we had 24.8%, but keep this in mind that this has to be compared to a bigger base of people coming in. So if I was to not take these freshers, we still remain at an elevated level of roughly 26.6%. So we are not declaring any victory on attrition. It is a concern. Overall, the industry attrition has spiked up. We are trying to do our best to make sure our employee value preposition and other things are taken care of. And we'll talk more about it as we go along. So I just wanted to set the base. And over to you for, you know, building on any questions that you have. Okay. So one, let, let's start off with the good points first. Um, I, uh, the, so from a 9% quarterly growth, you moved to 11%. I'm not saying this is the new norm per se, but in a difficult time, you've grown better. You've improved upon your margins sequentially as well, though it's a 30 basis point improvement, if I'm not wrong, but still an improvement. So is, is what is going right? Because I hear mixed commentary uh, from, uh, from a bunch of your peers, both large and mid, about how the business environment as well as the supply pressures are. Sure. So let's let's dig a little deeper into this. So in our 11.1%, look, we have also done some acquisitions over the quarter. Right. To be fair, our organic growth is 5.6% on a sequential basis, 30.5% on year-on-year -year basis on dollar terms, which itself is, I would say, a pretty good growth and so on. Now, the macro environment, look, the macro environment, 
you don't control. What you control is your reaction to the macro environment, how you deal with your customers. And I'm very proud to say a number of our customers, their leadership teams, we are you know closely working with them as they shape their strategies to address this macro in the in the hope that you know the recession, et cetera, that people are talking about, you know, if it comes, the people who are well prepared will last through it and will come out winning. So we are working with the CEO, CXOs of our customers and prospects to build out their strategies. And the technology part is one part of their strategy. More offshoring on certain things is one part of their strategy. If you look at our Q1 wins, the 394 is based on you know a number of larger deals, which are a mix of revenue acceleration, like the people who were coming out of COVID, those long range programs and cost optimization. So what has changed for us is the macro environment has shaped the deal pipeline towards cost optimization as well. And we are winning those deals as well. And we have been proactive to go in front of our customers and be a part of their solution towards addressing this macro rather than be a line item to be consolidated if a you know, thing happens. So that is what is boarding well for us. Our pipeline continues to stay healthy and we are fairly confident of our pipeline and the deal wins going ahead. A quick follow-up there, Sandeep. Uh, the, the refrain, common refrain when people, when people talk about the IT services this time around, uh, or IT services is that a downturn would typically bring about a downturn in the quantum of work given out as well. Now, I was talking to Emphasis just before our conversation, and he made a point that this downturn may be unlike the previous two downturns, simply because companies might actually off continue offshoring because IT services are helping them um, uh, fight out on the cost front and digitize their life cycle, which they are in the midst of. Would that be a fair assessment, do you think? Are you seeing it slightly differently? No, I would, I would support that argument. And I would say that is what we are seeing in the market. And again, different companies are different. I'm sure you know, there are segments where we work, where emphasis and the other companies work, and there are some segments that we are different. So if you look at it, we are, engine, you, we are fairly heavy on the digital engineering side, which basically means right from product engineering to the enterprise. So now the comment is fairly good for the enterprise, what you said. Now let's come to the enterprise software side. Look at the enterprise software. These companies basically get impacted when enterprises try to you know, squeeze their spend on software and so on. They, their growth rates kind of get impacted. So what is the tool in their toolkit? Use people like Persistent who are at the leadership level of product engineering, who have good expertise in you know, enterprise grade software development. And that's where we are also seeing significant demand from our enterprise software side of the house as we are from the you know people who took these digital transformation journeys that you know you talked about and you know maybe nitin from emphasis talked about and so there is i would say this time around our confidence based on our discussions with our customers is if a downturn is coming which you know looks like it is coming and I, nobody has a crystal ball how deep how long so i wouldn't comment on it but essentially in preparation for that I think people are not looking at technology spend to be cut the first. Technology is an enabler. They saw it in COVID. And keep in mind, as a company, while the sector did not grow in that time, persistent grew 12.9% in the COVID. Yeah. That proves yeah. test number one, we came out with flying colors. This is our second test, and we are so far coming out with flying colors and confident we'll deliver. Great. Uh, I'm guessing by that argument, the deal pipeline is also looking solid, uh, Sandeep? It, it is. is. It is. Okay. Now, a uh, couple of uh, things. I mean, I'll come to the attrition question just after this first. And please correct me if I'm wrong. But when I look at the revenue breakup, right? IP-led revenue, I believe declined sequentially 12.8. And I believe you had mentioned during the fourth quarter con call that you expected the IP-led services uh, revenues to grow 10 to 15%. Now, am I wrong here I, or can it change going ahead? So, so it has to be looked in two contexts. One, we said that there's a large contract that we had with one of our largest customers that we restructured and the impact of it will come over the quarters. So that is panning out. Second, if you look at our services revenue, if the services revenue is growing more than 50% on the year. To compare with that, if the second part, even if it grows a certain thing, then you know obviously there are things. And, and quarterly puts and takes will always be there. We are definitely you know, seeing IP revenues as a significant you know, part that we want to retain. At what percentages you know, they grow quarter on quarter, it will vary. Over the year, you will see a good this thing. OK. Now, uh, the other part is attrition, which you yourself said uh, continues to remain a concern. But uh, the, the, the pyramid rationalization would probably help you on the margin front, would it? 
at some point of time start helping you on the attrition front because there's so many companies who are talking about or trying to see if there can be a no poach arrangement or stuff like that because at some point of time what is seemingly irrational has to stop what's your sense here look i don't think this no poach etc we are looking at things like that we are not a party to any of these discussions as of this point in time and i am not sure how practical legal etc that is hmm. now more than that look there are many other things that are happening in our market look at what you just asked you asked about the macro environment and if you look at the macro environment and the macro environment source even tad bit more from where it is we already are seeing people who were startups who were getting funded like you know nobody is business their funding getting squeezed even well funded startups pulling back even larger companies saying they are going to tighten the hiring so a lot of that will also bring more rationality into the market second look what we just discussed we are bringing in 3300 freshers a company which has total 21000 employees as of this point in time including 1950 hired in the quarter so if we are expanding the industry capacity so are others and so if you sum it up the macro environment the funding for the startups you know kind of squeezing down the overall fresher you know thing coming on tap and everyone is talking about it whether it's our larger peers us or who are it so over a period of time sanity will prevail over the next 2 3 4 quarters attrition should come down so that is a sectoral thing second we are working on our own initiatives and hopefully as we keep doing well as we you know keep strengthening our employee value proposition as our esop plans etc play out when we differentiate ourselves from the others in the market sure there are company specific things also that will happen so sectoral as well as company 3 to 4 quarters hopefully things go well yeah well 80% of the employees having esops right that's a, that's an interesting thing so so therefore uh, you you reckon that uh, uh, you could maintain i i because i know you refer to yourself as a growth company uh, consistently you have those targets of a billion dollars maybe you want want to advance that as well but you reckon this 14 14 and a half band is something that you would stick on the keep it margin front so look last year full year for us was close to 14% 13.9 if i'm correct so we will try our best to maintain in the same over a year period now some quarters now for us in the coming quarter as in the current q2 you know we have our wage hikes there are puts and takes there is there is a wage hike there is a utilization improvement we can do there is a revenue increase that is happening there is currency impact that is happening there is many other things so we will try to balance a lot of these things some quarters may be a little bit lower some quarters may be a little bit higher for the year we will try to be in the same band as the last year or a slight bit here or there got it one one final question uh, sandeep and that is on a uh, conversations that might be happening with rest of the world it, it may not be your biggest segment at all but there is uh, some turmoil rest of the world even if us is uh, only an economic turmoil how are conversations there so look one of the largest deal wins that we had a deal win more than 50 million dollars in the quarter gone by for us is in europe that is our biggest deal win in europe so far one single deal so that is cv of more than 50 million dollars it's actually more, much more than that so from that perspective look every adversity brings some opportunity every cloud has a silver lining for us and and at a broader economic level europe will suffer more because of whatever is happening and it's anyone who reads the news can figure it out but within that when your customers are suffering if you are a part of their solution to address that suffering you will come out better so for us so far our pipeline whether it is india whether it is australia whether it is europe it is doing well and look we will keep working our way through it we have to be executing impeccably read the tea leaves adjust our strategies and be at it are you advancing the targets before we wrap up so look it's your guess or mine we will not give you forward looking guidance 966 million dollars is the starting run rate q1 into 4 and we are at it we have had good healthy bookings you can do your maths you can figure it out uh, great a uh, good show sandeep uh, congratulations on on the quarter really well done and all the best uh, for the show continuing thank you neeraj uh, good the pleasure was ours viewers thanks for tuning in thank you